Dear viewers, as we understood from our previous Vidyamritam video number 12 on Darshanas, Vedanta, also known as Uttara Mimamsa, is one of the six schools of Hindu philosophy. In this video, let us learn more about Vedanta in detail. What is Vedanta? Vedanta is one of the world's ancient spiritual philosophies based on the Vedas. It is the foundation of Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma. The uniqueness of Vedanta lies in its universal application which is relevant to all countries, cultures and religious backgrounds too. Understanding the term Vedanta The word Vedanta is a combination of two terms, Veda which means knowledge and Anta which can be understood as the goal of. Thus, the term Vedanta encompasses the knowledge of God and as well as the knowledge of our own divine nature. Therefore, Vedanta then is the search for self-knowledge as well as the search for Bhagavan. Understanding God and the Self in the Context of Vedanta As per Vedanta, Bhagavan or God, the loosely borrowed term from the English language is infinite in existence, consciousness and bliss. Parabrahman or the Supreme Consciousness is the only ever existing reality. It is believed that Bhagavan dwells in every individual self as the Atma. The Atma is pure, perfect, free and it is one with the Parabrahman. Please see the description below for the video link to the Vidyamritam video on what is the Atma. Texts on which the Vedanta Sutras are based on. The three fundamental texts on which Vedanta is based on are the Upanishads, the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita. The three schools of Vedanta As no single interpretation of texts emerged, many different schools of thought developed of which three are most popular. These were distinct in terms of their description of the nature of the relationship and the degree of the identity between the self that is the Atma and the Absolute that is the Parabrahman. Although Vedanta has as many as 10 different schools of thought, the most popular ones are Advaita, Vishishta Advaita and Dvaita. Advaita an influential school of the Vedanta system, the word Advaita means non-dualism. It was codified by the 7th century thinker Gaudapada who authored Mandukya Karika. Later, Adi Shankaracharya, the most prominent exponent of Advaita Vedanta, further built on Gaudapada's teachings. As per the Advaita school, there is non-differentiation between the self and the Brahman. There is no duality that exists. The mind which moves through illusion or maya has this truth concealed due to its ignorance or ajnana. Maya also plays the role of projecting a world that can neither be termed real or unreal, hence called mithya. Once the veil of maya is removed by embarking on the path of correct knowledge, the self identifies its oneness with the parabrahman and moksha or liberation is realized as the true state of being. The Advaita school firmly believes that no distinction of the self from Brahman is even possible. Vishishta Advaita Vishishta Advaita can be understood as qualified non-dualism. It is a school of thought that maintains that there are three everlasting entities. They are namely the Brahman, the Atma and the nature or Achit. Among the three, only Brahman is self-sufficient and the other two are dependent on Brahman. Between Brahman and Atma, the Atma joins Brahman after it is free from bondage and remains as a mukta or a liberated soul. The main advocate of this school of thought was Sri Ramanujacharya. Dvaita It is a school of thought that believes there are many everlasting realities, not just one or three. Brahman's creations are all real. Existential realities are also very real. Madhvacharya, a medieval saint from 12th and 13th centuries, advocated this school. There are five Bhedas or differences that are real as per this philosophy. Here, Bhagavan is an active controller who is responsible for liberation of the individuals. Even after liberation, the Atma remains unique and distinct. 
the parabrahman and the jivatmas are different and the jivatma is eternally dependent on the parabrahman therefore here moksha is the realization that all the finite reality is essentially dependent on the supreme being thereby the soul experiences its intrinsic joy paths to follow to understand our divine nature as per vedanta there are four margas or paths that we can follow to achieve the goal of understanding our divine nature any or a combination of whatever appeals to us can be pursued bhakti yoga this is a path of love and devotion the devotee approaches bhagavan through practices such as prayers chanting and meditation on god as a loving presence the surrender of life itself to bhagavan is the key to attaining moksha here jnana yoga this is a path of knowledge in this path the seeker takes upadesha from a guru and understands the divine nature within by casting away all that is unreal thus shravana manana and nididhyasana meaning hearing internalizing and applying knowledge is the means of gaining moksha karma yoga this is the path of selfless work those who follow this path do work as instruments of bhagavan and leave the results of the work to bhagavan karma yoga teaches detachment and equanimity towards the results of work this leads to chitta shuddhi or refinement of the mind which in turn makes one eligible for jnana that leads to moksha raja yoga this is the path of meditation meditation is an important practice which allows us to experience a higher state of consciousness where a deeper understanding of our divine nature is achieved what binds all the three schools of vedanta although all the three schools of vedanta are distinct on their own the three have certain threads of commonalities running through them they are brahman is the ultimate reality who is beyond space time name form and without a beginning or an end human beings are divine and their real nature the atma is infinite pure and eternal weaknesses good bad right or wrong exist in the mind the ignorance of the mind disappears when the light of pure knowledge shines all beings are bound in samsara and to be delivered from the cycle of birth death and rebirth is to achieve liberation truth is universal and it can't be limited it can be expressed through many different ways and different names but all truths ultimately lead to the same parabrahman we can learn to recognize our divinity through one or more of the paths of yoga karma jnana bhakti and raja conclusion no matter which school of vedanta is followed or engaged in ultimately all of them help us remove the veils that hide the truth brahman is already within us the constant effort to manifest this divinity that is within us makes the human life a worthwhile pursuit